Hi, I'm Professor Baldwin, and today I'm going to teach you how to multiply and divide rational expressions. But first, we're going to look at how to evaluate an expression for a given value of the variable. In example one, we're given this rational expression, t minus 2 over t squared minus 4t plus 8, and we're told to evaluate when t equals 2. All we do is replace every t in that expression with a 2. We'll have 2 minus 2 in the numerator. The denominator becomes 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 8. Now we just simplify. The numerator, 2 minus 2, is 0. The denominator, we do 2 squared, which is 4. We multiply the 4 times the 2, which is 8. And we have to add an 8. The numerator stays 0, and the denominator 4 minus 8 plus 8 simplifies down to 4. Now 0 divided by 4. If you have 0 cookies and you divide those among your 4 friends, everybody gets 0 cookies. Remember, 0 can be divided by 4, but 4 divided by 0 would be undefined. You can't divide by 0. If we ever come to a situation where we have to divide by zero, that would be a restricted value. It's any value that makes the expression undefined. Or for a rational expression, that would be the denominator is equal to zero. So how do we find those restricted values? Well, step one, set the denominator equal to zero and solve the resulting equation. And then step two, your restricted values are the solutions to that equation. Let's look at an example. We're going to construct a rational expression that's undefined for x equals negative two. Well, if x equals negative two, we can add two to both sides, and we know that x plus two equals zero. Remember step one of finding that restricted value said to set the denominator equal to zero and that solution gives you that restricted value. Well we have x plus two equals zero. So our denominator, if it's x plus two, would have a restricted value of negative two. And then our numerator, doesn't matter what our numerator is, right? The restriction is only based on that denominator. So I'll put my favorite number, eight as the numerator. So this would be a rational expression that's undefined when x equals negative two. Okay, the fundamental principle of rational expressions. This tells you if you have p, q, and r, which are polynomials, and q and r are not equal to zero, then you could factor them. And if you factor and you get p times r over q times r, that can be broken up as p over q times r over r. See what we're doing? We're simplifying. Because r over r is equivalent to one. And one times anything is itself. So it's showing us how you can simplify these rational expressions. The key is to factor. In the next example, we need to factor the numerator and the denominator. Then we're going to determine restrictions. Remember, that's very important to determine what restrictions x has. And then we're going to simplify. So factoring the numerator. Well, we have a trinomial. And we know that our trinomial, because the leading coefficient is 1, is going to factor into two binomials, and we'll have an x for the first term of each of those. Now our second terms need to multiply to 8 but add to 6, so those are factors of plus 2 and plus 4. Same process for the denominator. If this trinomial factors, because it's a leading coefficient of 1, the binomials will both start with an x, and we're looking to, for the two values that multiply to negative 4, but add to 3. How about a positive 4 and a negative 1? Okay, that was step 1, factor. 
Step two is determine the restrictions. Always find those restrictions before you simplify. So our restrictions are going to be whenever the denominator equals zero. So when x plus four times x minus one equals zero. Remember that zero product property? That said that if we have two products that are equal to zero, either the first is equal to zero or the second is equal to zero. So we solve each of these factors equal to zero. The first one, subtract four from both sides, and we get x equals negative four. The second, we add the one to both sides, and we get x equals positive one. So our restrictions are going to be that x cannot equal negative four, and x cannot equal positive one. Because if it does equal negative four or one, that's when we end up with a denominator of zero, which is undefined. Okay, next we need to simplify this expression that we have. And to simplify, we're looking at our numerator and our denominator to see what they have in common. And if I rewrite that numerator and denominator, we'll keep the numerator in the same order, and we're gonna change the order of the factors and the denominator, look at what happens. We have the factors of x plus four times x plus four over each other, and that simplifies to one. So this simplifies all the way down to x plus two over x minus one. Let's look at another example. Here, we're just going to simplify the given rational expression. And the easiest way to do that is to factor first. We can factor the numerator, we can factor out the GCF of two, and we have t minus one. Now look at the denominator. The t comes as the second term. Let's rearrange that so t is our first term, and we would have negative t plus one. Now keep the numerator, two times t minus one, and look at what happens when we pull out the GCF of negative one from the denominator. We're left with a t minus one. Notice they both have t minus one as factors in our numerator and our denominator. Those simplify to one, so this simplifies to two over negative one or negative two. Now, how do we multiply rational expressions? The multiplication property of rational expressions says that if we have polynomials P, Q, R, and S, where we have P and R in the numerator and Q and S in the denominator, you just multiply straight across. So your numerators multiply together to give you the new numerator, and your denominators multiply together. Now, the easiest way to do this is to first factor the numerator and denominator, then multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. And lastly, we want to simplify. So we want to reduce any of those ratios of common factors that are one or negative one. So let's start with this first example and we're going to factor that first numerator. Well, notice these three terms have a GCF of three in common. So factor out the three and we have the trinomial y squared plus six y plus five. Now let's move on to the denominator. There's a GCF of six. Factor out the six, and we have the binomial y plus one. Now let's move on to the second expression. That numerator doesn't factor, so it's y minus five. And the denominator, y squared minus 25, that's a difference of squares. That factors to y minus five times y plus five. Okay, I'm gonna simplify the second rational expression before we go back and factor the trinomial we have in the first. So notice we have y minus five over y minus five in that second 
rational expression. Those simplify out to one. Now, let's factor this trinomial in the numerator of our first rational. And we're looking for two numbers that multiply to five but add to six. The only numbers that multiply to five are five and one, and those add to six. So we have y plus five and y plus one. And we can multiply that numerator by our second numerator, which is now just one. Our denominators then are six times y plus one times y plus five from our second rational expression. And now that we've combined the two rational expressions, we're looking for factors that the numerators and the denominators have in common. And they both have y plus five, and they both have the factor y plus one. So this will simplify to three over six, or one half. Remember, just simplify as you go. Factor and simplify. Now, how do we divide? Well, dividing, when you have P, Q, R, and S, they're polynomials, actually is very similar to multiplying. If you have a rational expression divided by another rational expression, you can convert that to multiplication. You keep the first rational expression the same, so P over Q, and you multiply by the reciprocal of the second rational expression. Let's look at an example. Here we have the first rational expression, t squared plus 5t over t plus 1, and we're dividing by t plus 5. It doesn't look like a rational expression, but remember we can put this over 1, and now it's a rational expression. So what we do is we're taking our first rational expression exactly how it is, and we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of our second rational expression. And remember the reciprocal is just flipping it. So what was the denominator is now the numerator, and the numerator is now the denominator. Next step, we need to factor each of these pieces. Start with that first numerator. t squared plus 5t has a GCF of t, so factor out the t and you have the binomial t plus 5. The denominator doesn't factor. And then we look at our second rational expression. 1 doesn't factor, and the de denominator t plus 5 also does not factor. Now that we've factored both rational expressions, we can multiply straight across. Multiply all of the numerators together and multiply the denominators. Now we simplify. What do the numerator and denominator have in common in terms of factors? They both have the factor t plus five in common, so that simplifies out. And our numerator is now t times one, or just t, and our denominator is t plus one. So remember, dividing rational expressions, you're just copying that first rational expression and multiplying by the reciprocal of the second rational expression. And then you just follow that same multiplication property for rational expressions. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. And if so, I hope that you will check out some of my other math videos.